Hello and welcome to the latest installment of Super Data Science's custom chart tutorial series. In today's tutorial, we're going to be looking at how to build hexagonal bin plots in Tableau. A hexagonal bin plot, or hex bin for short, is a fantastic way to visualize data, especially incredibly dense data. A lot of times the message that you're trying to tell in a visualization can get lost if you have too many marks in your view. Hex bins come in, bin your data into hexagons, and make it possible to see the underlying trends going on while still keeping a great deal of detail in your view. This is especially popular in geographic applications. So in this case, we have zip codes. While it, this view doesn't show every single underlying zip code, and we'll model this later in Tableau, it does have enough detail so that you can see the trends without getting lost in the details. Now, when we build hex bins, there are actually two methods to create them. This tutorial is going to be the first method. It's a basic method. The second tutorial is going to be more advanced, where we bring in a few more advanced techniques, build off of this tutorial, and make it possible to bring your hex bin game to the next level. The data set we'll be using for this basic tutorial is a US zip code level data set. It's obtained from the IRS, and it has each zip code, some information about that zip code, its latitude and longitude, which is important if you're looking to build a geographic hex bin, some additional information, and then some measures that the IRS captures, number of tax returns filed, estimated population, and then total wages from that zip code. This data set is also available for download if you look to the links in the description of the video below. Now, coming into Tableau, we're going to connect to the data. This is a text file. We'll go ahead and connect to it. Once Tableau loads it up, you'll see we have all of our information here. We have zip code, zip code type, city, state, location, latitude, longitude, all the other fields that we're expecting as well. You also see a couple things, though. First of all, Tableau has seen this, read this as zip code, and it tries to think that it's a geographic property. This is actually just a string with no geographic role. Coming here as well, we have latitude, but longitude it tried to bring in as a float or a decimal number. So in this case, we're going to change it and say its geographic role is longitude. Once those are updated, we can use those two like we normally do. And everything's set, so let's go through to our sheet. So if we go in, we talked a little bit earlier about this map right here, where if you tried to show each individual zip code on a map, things would get messy really quick. Let's just model that really quick to show what we're looking at. So if we double click on here and bring in zip code, it's going to auto generate a map of the US. There's a few unknowns and that's fine. What's going on is we have a dot for each and every individual zip code. At some point we start losing data. Over here we, it looks like a filled map. You can see some dots on the edge but basically the zip codes are so close in the eastern US that everything tends to overlap. Same thing along the coasts and basically along anywhere in the US apart from a few areas out in the west. Now if you bring in let's say total wages across that area, drop that on color, Tableau will automatically change things to a filled map to where we have each zip code, the total wages that are happening in that zip code, and then it's trying to color by every single one of them. Again, we're losing some detail going on in here. So if you look through, you can pick out individual zip codes through here in the west where it's easy to see, out in the east, incredibly hard to see. So this is a great use case for hex bins. Now, the way to make a hex bin plot is actually fairly straightforward. You come in and create a new calculated field. For those of you joining us for the first time, the keyboard shortcut for that is Alt-AC, at least if you're using a PC. Our first calculated field we're going to use is called hexbin x. Come here. If you start typing, you realize we have two functions, hexbin x and hexbin y. So hexbin x, you look at the documentation over here, maps an xy coordinate to the x coordinate of the nearest hexagonal bin. The bins have side length 1, so the inputs may need to be scaled appropriately. All this is saying is you pass through two different numbers, x and y. In a geographic context, you're using latitude and longitude. In a non-geographic context, where you've built your own axis on the back end, then you'll have to have some other value that tells it manually where that exists. But in this case, we're just using latitude and longitude. So you come in, and we'll do longitude followed by latitude. You can do either way, but for our case, we're just going to use longitude first. We now have our x values. Let's come in, duplicate that. x bin x. We'll edit this one. Rather than a copy, we'll rename it hex bin y. And then change that from an x to a y. And so now we have our two fields that we're doing. Again, what these are doing is it's building out the axes that we need. So I right click dragged the x, brought it up to column. And here with a right click drag, I can now choose what aggregation we want. In this case, we actually don't want an aggregation. We just want to map every single value. So we have hex bin x. You see all of those values mapped along an axis. And then we have hex bin y. Again, choose the actual value rather than any aggregation on top of that. And when we do that, all of a sudden we're seeing each individual 
hex bin showing up that recreates, in a sense, a map of the US. Now at this point you may be wondering, hold on, we're talking about hex bins here. We have our hex bin axes, we have our hex bin calculated fields we've created, it's a hex bin plot. Why am I looking at a plot of circles? The thing is, what's going on here is Tableau has intelligently recognized that with hex bins, we actually want the shape chart type, and it's given us access to the shape option here on our marks card. If you click on that, you'll see we have some unfilled shapes, some filled shapes, and you can click through them and your view will update, but none of these are actually hexagons. If you go through to your more shapes, we have shape palettes that we can choose between, but again, we have a bunch of different options, and yet none of them are actually hexagons. So what we have to go in is actually create a custom shape palette that I'll show you how to do real quick. So right here we have a just small picture file. It's included, there's a link to it in the description below. It's just a filled hexagon that you can then use. What you do is you come in, and this is gonna be on a PC, so Mac it'll be slightly different. But if you come into your documents, you'll find that Tableau, when it was installed, created something called My Tableau Repository. Double click, go into there, you have a whole bunch of different things that you can work through. One of them is shapes. Click on there, and what we have here is a folder that represents each and every single one of these custom shape palettes. So we have our default, we have our bars, our bug tracking, our gender. If you go back and you look through here, you'll see that you have access to all of those here as well. Highly recommend not deleting any of these. But if you go in and in this folder, you make a new folder called hexagons. Move over that image file that we used before. Come back into Tableau, click on shape, more shapes. So we don't have anything yet, but then if we click reload shapes, Tableau goes back, looks into that folder, and says, oh hey, we now have hexagons. So what we've done is we click on that hexagon, that filled hexagon we have right there, come in, hit apply. Sometimes it will go a little screwy, and it will bring in what used to be at that point in the dropdown. So like KPIs was there, so it brought in the first one from that. But here we have hexagons. So you go and you hit apply a few times, and it goes back and finally recognizes, hey, we have something new. Now if we look at our view, we'll increase our size a little bit and we have our hex bin plot. Play with the size a little bit so you get it looking right. Now the great thing is you can drag out, we looked at total wages before, let's look at that again. We have our sum of total wages across the US and we can see which areas and their underlying zip codes have the highest wages. No real surprises here. They kind of clump towards the larger cities. So this is LA, up here is San Francisco, over here is New York. And then in order to finalize this a little bit, we can come in, we can get rid of our header we can get rid of the header on both axes. At this point, we actually don't really need the title either. So we have a great looking map of the US built out of hex bins. Again, you can play with the size a little bit more. In the advanced tutorial, we'll get into more detail on how to make sure that these all line up correctly. You'll see there's a little bit of skewing going on. Come back for the advanced tutorial and you'll be able to see why that's going on and what we can do to help fix it. But for this basic, we're gonna do a little bit more formatting just to finish things off. We'll come in for our worksheet, we'll actually make it black on the background. Uh, the black background tends to make a really nice view, especially when you're using this geographic hex bin. We'll get rid of all of these extra lines, and then we'll come in here, formatting our lines, we'll get rid of the grid lines, we'll get rid of the drop lines, get rid of our reference lines, and then we'll get rid of our axis rulers as well. Now again, here we have our hex bin map. We see the different values. You can come in if you want, double click on here, change it to something more representative of wages that we're looking at. If you want, you can make it, let's just say green gold diverging. I mean, you have a bunch of different options to do whatever you want to make sure that your colors really pop how you want them to. But anyway, that's it for the basic hex bin tutorial. It's been great having you here. If you'd like, we ask you to please subscribe below so you can come back and see more tutorials as they're posted. Again, we'll be coming up and following this with an advanced hex bin tutorial to show you more advanced techniques on how to build these. But for now, that's it, and we hope to see you on our next tutorials. Thanks.